nothing modern about this, apart from contrast paints. I'm getting strange looks. I'm stood on a chair in the largest gaming hall in the entire industry. We've just worked Las Vegas Open, but what's important is we're about to teach you how to paint some Tomb Kings. Fast, effective, they turn out really well. I really enjoyed this a simple scheme. Faces, bases, and shields, you know the rules. Spending a lot of time on the shield. Let's get some armies on the table because if you're painting Tomb Kings or skeletons, you probably have about 200 models to get prepared. Okay, one quick point or tip before beginning. If you're using traditional old school skellies, there's two main problems with these. One is casting around the ribs. You can see that I've done a little bit of sanding here to try and smooth it. And the other one is just general delicacy of the model and that's normally the arms coming off. I fix both of those by gluing elbows to rib cages in some situations for the delicacy, which also hides the ribs. Or if that doesn't work out with where you want the arm to be positioned, you can do a secondary gluing point on the spear on the thigh or something like that. Way less delicate and likely to snap. So just more practical and especially if you're going to pick things up by spears when you're gaming or while painting or anything, really, really helpful. All right, so our base coat is down. I've used Doomball. You could use any brown here, doesn't matter too much. We're going to largely cover it with white scar anyway. If you want something with slightly better coverage, you could use word bearers or um, anything, you know, whatever you prefer. I've gone for a warm one. Uh, that's the only conscious choice in terms of what brown I've picked. So uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to hit it with a Xenophil spray of White Scar. It's the best white GW you've ever had, but still make sure it's warm, shake it a lot, and don't do it in humid conditions. And I'm going to be aiming from 45 degrees and above and doing careful sprays across the miniature, not, you know, just like facing it and plowing the details. This is a hand base coat, by the way, and I think there's no problem with that on these minis. They're a bit rough and old, so if anything, it kind of smooths them out a little. So that has turned out pretty well, actually. Looking really good. What I'm going to do is I'm quickly going to spend a little bit of time just redefining details around the face with a white and some dry brushing with a small dry brush. So dry brush of choice is an extra small plus for this. About the perfect size, really, in this situation. I don't want something super tiny. I'll put it next to his head. That's more helpful. I don't want something super tiny, but I do want something small enough to be able to get in there and kind of carefully buff around. So any white is fine here, really, I would say. I wouldn't use something super chalky. I'm just going to use Vallejo. Tiny bit. Be really careful loading the brush. I've already dampened it slightly, and I'd much rather have too little come off at first rather than too much. So you could get the details again, like the ribs and stuff like that if you wanted, uh, or leg bones, up to you. Mostly, this is for the face. Cool. Like I said, just a little touch up, ready for the contrast. So the contrast is going to make a really big difference to this model. Uh, you could use whichever one you like. The reason I'm going for Skeleton Horde is it's pretty soft. So even uh, neat or with just a tiny bit of water in it, it's not going to do too much. Using a size 2 here, which is my favorite brush for the contrast I have on infantry models. Notice that I've started on the arm, which is, of course, going to be covered by the shield. So good place to test out. And what we're going to do to make it look fancy is wet our brush. And I'm just going to remove it some, from some of the upwards facing areas. We'll especially be making use of this on the face. It's a really good way to get more out of your contrast. I'm going to dilute it a little bit further than that for the rest of the model though. So let's do his face now. You've got to work quite quick doing this, but there's nothing wrong with that. So now I'm not using it super thick and all my strokes and trying to drag it and kind of end downwards. Quickly get the top of the head, but almost immediately wet my brush and we're going to start pushing this around and removing it. So we want the top of his head to be almost clean. And then any other details you want to pick out or make sure aren't swamped, we're doing removal of the contrast. And we want to leave loads in the brow and areas like that because it'll just make things stand out. So it's up to you. You can control your contrast. I think that looks really good. So much better than just slapping it down, not thinking about it. Show this once more on the back on a large area. Any area where we want to be lighter, wash out our brush, lick it to a point, and then we just use it as a mop, basically. Super easy. This is why you want a decent sized brush with a decent point. We've got a zenithal spray, we've got a zenithal contrast, kind of, or a reductive contrast, so it's worked really well. I could have actually removed more from that shoulder. Too late now. Okay, so optional step here. I'm going to use Screaming Skull for some highlights. Essentially what I want to do here is just exaggerate anything that we like the look of already. Skeleton Horde and Screaming Skull thankfully work really, really well together, so this is a very nice combination. It's pretty forgiving. If the Skeleton Horde isn't showing up, just take a little bit of white. Be careful, this is going to be pretty bright. I'm thinking the teeth on this. Fingers crossed, steady hands. If you want to be lazy, you can just do the bits facing top and front. Okay, so spear shafts. I'm going to go pretty traditional on these. Old school in all fashions. Going for my fist on red. You could contrast these. And there's nothing wrong with contrasting them. My main reason for not contrasting them actually is I'm happy with the bone how it is. 
and it's pretty easy for the contrast to kind of start pulling against the bone and a red's going to show up a lot on pale colored bone stuff so we're just going for traditional painting here which should happen pretty much in one coat with a paint as strong as my fist on over a white base or largely white base absolutely not a worry if you go over your uh, metallic parts and in fact if they're going to be gold it's uh, it's no bad thing at all you probably have an easier time getting gold to base coat over red than you would do if it was over white be careful around the hands it's not as easy as making mistakes with contrast but again it's a very strong bright red paint going over a pale base it will show up very easily you don't want to get a slip on the face or something like that especially when the face is looking pretty good considering the tiny amount of time that we put into it <laughs> just made a slip <laughs> maybe i should be using a one for this around these details like i said i'm actually gonna purposely go over the metallic parts silver doesn't like going over white neither does gold so whatever color you're doing them uh, white is the wrong undercoat he's already looking old school isn't he look at those colors there is nothing <laughs> nothing modern about this apart from contrast paints all right, metallics now. You notice I'm using a very small brush here. I'm using a double zero. This is just for those little areas where I want to be able to get in underneath something or something like that. Or for dotting these, I want to hit the sides of these so a smaller brush is going to be helpful. It's an old school model, so there's barely any detailing sections, which makes me absolutely fine with doing the couple of them that there are where we need to be delicate. Hopefully if the red will get a decent... Uh, decent coat with the gold yeah it's not so bad okay i'm already missing using a larger brush i'm actually going to mix a tiny bit of doomble in which should increase the coverage a little bit and it gives us room for a highlight if we want it things are happening quick so i'm fine with doing two thin coats if we need to quick optional gold highlight take any very light silver i'm using vallejo game air silver here doesn't matter that it's an air paint it's fine with a normal brush just going to add a little bit of that to my gold and then it's just a matter of quickly dotting each rivet if you don't like how silver this is don't worry i'm hitting some of the admittedly very very fat edges on these old school spears they are not that pointy Right, now the reason that we did all of our highlighting before doing any washing, if you're wondering about that or whether we're washing the red, the answer is yes to all of the above. So, I've got some sepia here. It's going to slightly dull down the red. You can always re-highlight it if you want or you could do it with a brighter red. But what this is going to do is it's going to pull everything together and it's really going to kind of level up our gold and make it very, very regal looking. Just want to quickly get the entire thing before any one part of it dries and of course because sepia is so close to skeleton hoard uh, there's no worry about this overspilling and in fact this is a lot of the reason for me choosing to do things this way round you don't want to make them on purpose but it really isn't a problem if you get some pulling somewhere something like that this will mean that all of the details as well they get a, a nice little darker ring around them which makes up for the fact that details like that are quite difficult to highlight precisely so we didn't and we're not going to worry about it right he's looking great the most important oh, dot the eyes while i'm here why not and the nose bring some detail back most important bit now of course the shield now pick your shields carefully with these kits because you may want more or less details depending what you want going on i've got some examples down here and if you want to really concentrate on that bright fade and pull attention to that then maybe you want less details or if you like how the little gold sections look then maybe you want to pick ones with more rivets or something like that i'm gonna go for a middle ground for this one We're going to be going for a white base coat. If you want to see the difference between going from a dark base coat and going from a light base coat, these ones are done from a white base coat and these ones are done from a black base coat. And you can see these ones turned out brighter. That's how, uh, how light the base coat or undercoat affects the final paint job. Okay, so shield time. Now you could airbrush this, you could stipple it. But whatever you're doing, going over a white base coat is really going to help it being bright, which is what we've done. I'm choosing to use Temple Guard as well because it's got, let me show this next to Sotek, it's brighter. I mean, it's, it's that simple. It's also, it, it's probably got a bit more white in it and that should help it cover a little bit better. It's not a base paint, so it's not going to have insane coverage, but it should have better. I can use a much bigger brush than this. Okay, so I'm using Medium Plus here. And at the top, 
I'm okay with this taking a few steps. Right, we're not going to get it perfect straight away, but I just want to get a base coat down that is bright and light. Two coats isn't bad at all. So now we're going to grab the Sotec. And probably not what you're expecting. You could choose something else, Screamer Pink or another kind of uh, shade color to this. I'm also going to grab a little bit of purple in case we've got space for that at the bottom of the shield. On the bottom of the shield to be physically darker as well because our weathering will show up nicely on it. So. Stipple glazing. This is how Rich Gray does his on his uh, dry brushing videos. Well, using the dry brushes, but for stippling. And we've got time to, sorry, we've got space to pin a little bit, a slightly dark one at the very bottom. I'm gonna make sure this is diluted more. Xerus is a strong color, it's got good coverage, so we should be getting down to like a, hopefully like a slightly more purple, but there we go. That is way too strong. Get more of the blue involved. We should be able to cover that over, but that's why we were meant to be being careful, and that was not careful enough. Okay, do a couple of steps, dilute things a bit more. Much softer. Step on that transition, and we'll just repeat that until we're happy with it. Now, if you want, you could go brighter at the top. I'm kind of okay with that, and especially with the gold coming in, I think it's gonna go quite high. But I'm gonna pop a quick edge highlight on. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna suggest that there's some planks on this. That should be a bit over. Take something way lighter, Gauze Blaster. Okay, so we've done the gold and the shield, just as we did elsewhere, looks great. I've given it a final little highlight just because I want to bring attention to it. The shield is probably the most important bit, barring the face on the entire model, in my opinion. So it's definitely worth spending a bit more time on. On that subject, I should have gone further with the purple at the bottom of the shield, so I'm going to do a very quick couple of glazes. Just ending my strokes towards the bottom of the shield. It would have been easy to just stipple this at the beginning by going stronger, but is what it is. That was too glazy. Been a while since we've had some f f on the channel, hasn't it? Right, part of the reason I'm not worried about this being super smooth, although I have tried to keep it inside my lines to suggest the wood again, is because we're going to be dry brushing over this anyway and weathering it up. So let's go. Our guys are from the desert and we need some more sand going on. Whether it's on the feet or the shield, the bottom of the shield, I think you're always rewarded for doing this type of stuff. So I'm definitely going to do it on the shield where it'd show up on a bright color over bone. I guess you could argue it wouldn't show up as much, but it would definitely show up against painted shields. So we've got some Zandri dust here. And I'm going to have ready some, you could use any bright ivory. Um, you could use a non-GW one like I am. I'm using the name bright ivory, actual bright ivory from Pro Acryl. 
and I think extra swarms plus is probably perfect for this. Proceed with caution because we have a really nice shield and we don't want to ruin it. Taking a little It is not about rushing this one bit. Just resist. Go slow, test, all the normal stuff. You do not want a nasty, great, big, sandy smudge down your mini, especially on the bit that we've spent the most time on. This is why we wanted that darker base, because this is going to show up more easily on something that's dark, especially dark purple. Okay. And take a tiny bit of the ivory, it's very strong. Everything from Procrawl is strong. Remove a lot, test on the finger. There we go, so what was already a kind of centerpiece for the model, we've just enhanced there, that should look great. See how it looks on our guy. Uh, by the way, just like every shield in the world, you should forget to paint the back and then rush it at the end. So that's just Doomba with, <laughs> with null oil on it. Oh, that's great. Super classic, pretty fast. The more of these you do at once like this, the faster it will get. Um, and yeah, you really don't have to worry about precision with kind of anything apart from the optional bits where I suggested the wood grain or the planks, whatever you want to call it. We've got our sequencing down. It was stuff like doing the red not with a contrast and using the same wash on multiple areas and things like that. If you do have any slips on areas like the shield, you know, you get some gold just next to here on the blue where you shouldn't. Remember, you can always just push a wash into that area and try and hide it. There's actually multiple areas on this model where I've done that. And rather than fixing it, we just kind of shaded the mini and it worked out absolutely fine. I should, I'm gonna dry brush his feet as well, just to kind of finish it off. And actually, use a licked finger from the top and I'm just gonna pull a little bit of the dry brushing off the bottom gold one. There you go. Licky finger, solves all. Okay, we are done. Turned out pretty well. It's a very fast and steady tutorial, and if you're doing it over 10 things rather than one thing, it just gets quicker and quicker and quicker and quicker. You can actually learn to kind of up your game painting like this, and very soon, hopefully, we should have pretty much the same paints doing something way more fancy. Maybe there'll be a spoiler on screen now. We have been plagued by 2024, the year of recording technology death and editing technology death. So we're already a laptop and a recording device in. Hopefully we're done because <laughs> we're, only, <laughs> we're only in January. Anyway, got some competition winners running down the side of the screen now. These are the most liked uh, comments from below videos where we've run competitions. And I'm gonna choose this one, which isn't the most liked, but is my favorite. And that suggests that we collaborate with Marco. We would love to collaborate with Marco. So go over and pester him immediately. I'm sure he won't mind. He'll get some comments out of it. I think that's it. If you want to mix up our method for your basing, just remember that the dust that comes off Earth is often a little bit more chalky. So desaturate any dust that you've got on the bottom of your shields and make sure that you make them pretty dark. It will really make a big difference because you want that high contrast, otherwise it might just look like you've done some messy painting. Stay tuned for us doing a less messy version of this in the future. And this turned out pretty well. These models are incredible. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna try and up my game with, uh, with what we can push the stipple dry brushing contrast technique with. Anyway, we'll catch you in the next video. See you soon.